Hello and welcome back to my craft room. This is the second video in a series of three collaborating with the lovely Sue over at Susie Q Makes. I'll put a link to Susie's channel in the description box, of course. So we started off with identical little mini packs of fabric scraps and um, challenged ourselves to make three projects each. Susie's projects have been absolutely amazing. The second one should be out now. We're putting both our videos out at the same time. I've already had a sneak preview because Susie has sent me all three of her projects that she's made to um, offer as giveaways in our next live stream, which will be on Saturday the 7th of May. We do it in the first Saturday of every month. It's kind of a get together for the community. If you've not been before, try and join us if you can it's always a lot of fun you can join in with the live chat you can bring along your own projects sh share what you're doing in the discord community if you would like to and uh, yeah we just generally have a, have a lot of fun so yeah it will be extra fun this time because we'll have some lovely giveaways my theme has been beachcomber the original prompt that i was given to pull out the fabric scraps was sky sea and sand and that prompt was given to me by Helen, Churn Dash Helen. You'll know her as Churn Dash if you're in the Discord community. So she won a previous giveaway of a little a pack of fabric scrap. The idea was that I would pick out the scraps to suit whoever won. And the prompt Helen gave me was sky, sea and sand. And it's such a fun prompt. Anyway, I ended up making four boxes, not just the one. Sandy over in Australia got one. One went to Helen in the States. Susie got one and I kept one for myself. And Susie and I have challenged ourselves to do this collaboration. I'm also hoping that Helen and Sandy will share pictures of whatever they make and I'll share them in future videos. Um, so last time I made this little slow stitched pebble and this time I've made a scavenger gull. So I'm keeping the theme of beach coma going. Next time for the next video, whatever I've got left, um, I'm going to turn into a collection of postcards and I shall be offering those as my contribution to the giveaway. Let's have a look at my scavenger goal. I am so chuffed with how he turned out. I really am. <laughs> Isn't it lovely when you make something and you're actually that pleased with it? Here's my little scavenger goal. Take your hat off for a minute. So he's got a little uh he's got a little bag where he's been uh He's been pinching people's chips. I haven't finished making the chips. I've just run out of time now. I'm going to make the chips a bit better. He's been pinching people's chips. He's got a couple of fish in there as well. All of this, is except for the plain white calico that I used, not calico, it's kind of a plain white cotton that I used here for the main part of the body. Apart from that, everything has been made out of the, the uh, scrap pack. I'm just so pleased with how he turned out. Oh, I'm gonna, I forgot to do it. I'm gonna put buttons here because the wings will kind of move. And I think to make them a bit stronger, I think I'll just put some buttons on either side and stitch them through. But yeah, I just need to stop today because I've just kind of run out of time, really. He's really, he's wonky, but I like the wonkiness. And I made, I made this little hat as well, a little sun hat for when he's out scavenging, beach combing. So yeah, that's him finished. The idea is he's got a bit of kind of grit in the bottom, not just um, polyfill. So he's got a little bit of weight to him. And the idea is he'll sit on the edge of a shelf with his with his legs sort of dangling. I like that they're just crossing like that all by themselves. Yeah, I've had a lot of fun with this. He's not quite finished yet, um, but yeah, I've had a lot of fun. And I would quite like to do other birds in the same way. It was so, it was actually easier than I thought to do. So yeah, I'm going to hand over to my earlier self now so you can get a, a few peeks at how this project came together. I hope you enjoy. Right, this is the sort of beginnings of my <laughs> my seagull design. I'm hoping this is going to be about the actual size. These are the pieces of fabric I've still got left. I'm going to do this project. I've already made my little stone, my pebble, slow stitch pebble and after I've done the seagull, I'll use whatever is left to make a set of cards. I think for the main body of the seagull, I'm going to bring in these two pieces of plain white cotton that I've got left over from another project. 
as we did we did say we could bring him you know back in fabric and trims and you know threads and all the extra bits and pieces as long as we mainly use these pieces that are in the pack so I'm thinking I'll use this for the body and then I'll pick out what I can from here <laughs> for the wings and the legs and the beak maybe a little bit extra for the tail I just want to get the, the rough sort of shape down so what I'm thinking is it's going to be seated so I'm going to make give it a kind of a flat bottom so I think I'm just going to cut out two pieces this shape pretty much use that as a silhouette for the sides and then I'm going to sort of inset a kind of a gusset down the front here and probably running along underneath to give it that flat bottom and I think possibly rather than stuffing it completely with a polyfill or whatever I might put in I've got this kind of grit stuff hang on this stuff which I got for making some pin cushions and I think that would give it some nice weight weight even if it's just in the bottom to make it sit nicely kind of on the edge of a shelf and have his legs dang dangling over that's kind of what I've got in my head I might make him a little hat a little bag because he's a scavenger girl in, in his bag I'll have a couple of chips that he's pinched from some holiday makers and, and, and a, a fishtail sticking out so I've sketched this out and I think I'm hoping that I'm gonna I've done this dark enough that I can kind of take the shape straight from my drawing not really so I have taken let me just show you I have had a look at some photo references here we go some pictures of girls I don't think I'm gonna have those scary eyes I think I'm gonna use little black bead eyes probably or it might even just be stitched on but I've 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 not gone for realism obviously I've extended the neck of it I'm making him sit down his tail isn't going out as far as it really does but I've sort of you know had a look at the colors the way you know you've got the gray wings and the black tip on the tail darker gray towards the tips of the wings and that very distinctive beak, that yellow beak, it sort of goes straight out and then hooks down at the end. I'm going to make it not quite so sharp because that would be difficult to do. And, I, and the way his, his, he's got almost this kind of smile shape that goes all the way along the beak and kind of into his face, or finishing like at the corner of his eyes. I'm going to try and get that effect. And then he's got these kind of <laughs> these little knobbly knees and his webbed feet. Kind of the look I'm going for, but it's going to be a bit, it's not going to be the least bit realistic. The white fabric out in just this kind of silhouette shape first then I'm going to cut like a gusset shape that will probably go underneath as well tack those roughly together to make sure it looks like it's going to work the beak will go on separately not quite sure how I'm going to make it carry on like this if I can't make it carry on like that then I'll just make it just attached to the front of the face like that it would just a more sort of comical and the, the wings I think I'm going to make them sort of exaggeratedly little small stumpy wings because I think it's quite cute I'd really like to get a dark dark tail there but I can't this is going to be quite a long-winded project I think I'm just going to come back and show you all the kind of highlights of it show you how I'm doing as I go along and um, and hopefully before you've seen this you've seen how the whole thing turns out so you know more than I do at this stage right so I'm going to come back when I've kind of put my prototype shape together sewn this up all the way around it's I didn't want to just leave an opening somewhere what I've done is I've sewn it up everywhere and now I'm going to cut an opening where the wing is going to go and uh, I can turn it right way out through that opening I just felt like that was easier than trying to leave an opening around 
one of the seams. So I'm cutting this where the wing is going to be able to go and, and uh, cover it up. And if it isn't, then I'll patch it and that'd be quite fun to have a little patch on there. So if I have to make the hole a little bit bigger, it's fine. But it's like with all of these kind of projects when I'm making them up as I go along, I love when you get these little kind of challenges as you work through the project and you find a way around them and they lead to things you hadn't thought of before. I like making it patchworky. Okay. I'll be back when I'm, I'm going to try stuffing this out a bit now with some polyfill and maybe some of the gritty stuff in the bottom and then I'm going to do a little over stitch because I only used a small straight stitch uh, all around here well, so I thought then if it doesn't work it's not going to be too difficult to pick out <laughs> and um, so I, I'm then going to if, if I'm happy with the shape I'll do a little over stitch all the way around I've clipped all of the curves as well because the, the um, gusset part I cut diagonally across the square so it, it's on the bias in effect so it's got that little bit of stretch to it. So here we go, um, it looks a little bit, it's kind of twisted whether, I don't know, it, it's probably because I've not been very accurate with where I put the gusset in but I think that'll be fine, I'll make it a little bit quirky, that's absolutely fine. I think I'll be able to cover this with the wings but I'll do a, a mend and I'll patch it if I need to. So now I've got, I've got some of this um, polyfill. I'm going to stuff this packet as tightly as I can into all the, the head space and the tail space and I think I'm just going to try putting some of that grit stuff just kind of in the belly bit just to give it a bit of weight there because I think it'll help it to sit. And I'm hoping, this all looks a bit wonky here, but I'm hoping that by the time I've got it stuffed out then I'll do some stitching through to indicate tail feathers and this is just the kind of the base of it all I need to know is it's going to give me roughly the right shape and it's not far off that shape I was aiming for is it when you look at it like that and then I can add all the decorative bits and pieces and give it a bit of character so this is the trickiest bit really I've got, I've got um, one of these wooden knitting needles I'll use this to poke my stuffing in because I need it to be nice and firm once I've done all that a bit I'll be back and show you the next step there we go he's all um he's all stuffed now so that needs stitching up um i quite like how he he's just twisted a bit so he's slightly turning his head that way and uh yeah slight twist in his head but i quite like that just his little wonkiness and he just stand it up or sit up rather so quite happy with that at the moment um, i'm going to take this downstairs now and do some stitching depending on how well that goes i might just carry on and start working on the uh, the wings and all i'm going to do for them is the same as i did with this i'll just trace off that shape that i've got there cut it out leaving a little bit of a seam allowance i think this is probably going to be nice for the wings yeah so i'll see how that goes i might uh, it might be that when i when i come back in the morning i will have got a lot further with this i'm feeling at the moment it looks more like a dove than a seagull but by the time he's got his his beak hopefully maybe by the time i come back in the morning i'll have got the main sort of body of the of the of the seagull done and i can start working on some of the little accessories his little hat and his bag and his, his fish and things it's the next morning and it's where i've got two i'm quite happy with him so far i think he's quite cute <laughs> um i ended up patching him on this side because the little slit that i'd cut to stuff it um did show a bit and i really like the look of the patches i think that adds something to it i think what i might do i've just stitched these wings on through you can see where i've stitched up there where I stuffed the I cut a slit to stuff it <laughs> I just like the look of that stitching I think what I might do is get a couple of little buttons and put one here and one here and stitch through again just to make sure those are really secure I quite like that you can alter the angle of them so I probably will end up doing that quite a bit so I want to make it sure it's nice and strong he still sits up nicely <laughs> he's a little bit it's a little bit crooked but um but he does sit up nicely the beak was actually quite easy to do in the end. I just, I didn't even draw it out first. I just freeform cut it with a pair of scissors, just roughly the shape I wanted, only bigger because of, you know, allowing a seam allowance. And then I cut away a triangular shape and just turned that under and applied it to his face. I'm going to stitch it on a bit. I've just tacked it on really at the moment. So I'm going to stitch it on a, a little bit more firmly with some of this, the yellow stranded cotton. And then I will stitch a line right the way 
through like this just to and make it look like two parts of a bit and carry that on up to give that effect of that kind of smile and I might even do a little bit of kind of thread painting just little short stitches some in the white and some in the yellow to sort of blend this into the into the face a little bit just a bit I'm not going for realism <laughs> obviously <laughs> He's turned out very crooked, that kind of twist in his tail means you see the tail stitches. I've just done a little bit of a feather stitch, not feather stitch, fly stitch for his tail feathers there. They show more from this side than they do from that side because of the twist, but that's okay. Did the same on these wings as well. After I'd stitched this all together and stuffed it, I did a chunky kind of over stitch on all the seams, just because, partly to make it stronger, but also because I, I like the look of it. And I just used two strands of a one of the uh, embroidery threads. What I'm about to do now is make it make him a little bag. <laughs> so I'm going to make a bag out of this. I've just cut, <laughs> I cut a strip off of there, cut it in half, snip this little piece off. This might end up being a front pocket on his, on his bag, or it will be a patch somewhere else, perhaps on his hat. I'm going to use for the hat. I think I'm going to use this and make a kind of lined floppy brimmed hat <laughs> that will kind of turn up like this I don't know that's kind of what I've got in my head use a bit of this to make a, a couple of fishes because I just think that'll be perfect for a fish and maybe I've got some small sequins knocking around somewhere that I could put for a fish eye I might make two fish they're going to be tiny it's going to be a bit fiddly to do but I quite like the idea of doing two fish one head up one tail up kind of thing and um I have got all the white colours in here to do a couple of chips as well because seagulls, I don't know about uh, other countries, but here in the UK, seagulls love to swoop down and pinch your, pinch your chips straight out of the bag when you're sitting there eating your fish and chips by the seaside or your pasty if you're in Cornwall. And then there's the feet. So for the feet, I think use this to make the legs and this to make the feet. Just stuff them very lightly. That's what I thought I would, I would do. My patchwork scavenger girl. While well, I was looking for a bit of ribbon to use for the for the strap for his bag, I found I found this, which is a little bit too wide. But what I could do is just um, fold it in half and stitch it together again, just to make it a better a better scale. And then I've got enough of that left that it might be useful to use as an easy way to make the brim of his hat as well, the crown of his hat. That. And I also found this little piece, this tiny piece, which I'm going to keep with that because I think it'd be nice to add to the cards I end up making. I've still got loads of this left, loads. I think it's probably best to just do a small blanket stitch on this. Let's hide the thread inside, the knot rather, inside. This is quite a loose woven fabric, so it's wanting to just pull straight through if I get too close to the edge. You should see the amazing three projects that Susie has made. Wow. She has sent them all to me so that I can send them on um, because she's donated them all as a giveaway for our next live stream. In case you're watching this and you don't know, every month, the first Saturday of every month, we have an online get together. We do a live stream from here in, in my craft room to YouTube and we get together. I pretend I'm going to do a bit of crafting, but don't really get around to doing very much because I'm too busy chatting with everyone. And um, you can all join in the live chat. We often have giveaways. We often have a guest on. I think this time we're not going to have a, a guest, but I have got one lined up for the next time. This time we'll be doing a lot of giveaways because Susie has given me three. I'm going to choose one of mine. I'm going to pick a couple of things, one of Susie's and one of mine that I'm going to give away internationally and the others will be just UK. I can't afford to send them all overseas, but I will make a couple available overseas. Oh, just wait until you, I'll do a video nearer the time during the week before showing all the prizes. I nearly cried when I opened the box that Susie sent with all hers in. I was so overwhelmed by them. OK, 
okay I'm just going around the corner now so it's a little bit awkward but we can do it first Saturday in the month will fall on the 7th of September this time if you want to make a note in your diary so you don't miss it I don't make the giveaways available to enter beforehand on I used to make it so you could enter them in discord and the Facebook group and on Instagram I don't do it anymore because we got some scammers so I'm trying to keep <laughs> the community safe I can't it's it's so annoying you just want to do a nice thing and do this giveaway and people take advantage and yeah. so you will only be able to enter during the actual live stream and the winners will be announced during the live stream I will never contact anyone afterwards and ask them to log into a website or give me their bank details or any of those things sadly a couple of people did fall for that one time and so yeah I've had to change how I do them but it's nice that though that the people who join in with the live streams regularly and uh, participate in all the chat and everything that they get a chance to win so so that is good Right, so I managed to sort of go around the corner there, a little bit awkward, but I think probably once I've got this roughly put together, I'll go around and do another layer of the blanket stitch to tidy it up a bit, because that's a bit of a mess, but yeah. So I'm going to work around and do that now. Put the other one in the other side. It looks like I'm going to have a little bit here. That'll be the kind of lid to his to his bag, so yeah. Um, I'll cobble, finish cobbling that together and, and I'll be back started doing a, a bit more work on the beak area I've done some short uh, oh, it's good to focus some short little yellow stitches and I'll be doing some white stitches over that as well just to sort of blend all that into the face a tiny bit as I said I'm, I'm not going for realism but just think those little details are quite nice and now I'm, I'm using the yellow thread again just a single strand this time and doing a back stitch through the whole thickness right through I went right through the head and out the other side to make this the, the kind of join in the beak that kind of makes it look like their smile comes <laughs> comes right out to here and then the eye will go about there so it's quite easy to to do just need to make sure that you you keep an eye on where it's Oops. So I know I want to go in there, but I just need to check where I'm coming out on the other side. So I turn it round. Yep. I could draw the um I could pencil it in first or use my heat erasable pen again just to draw the line. But I'm finding I don't really need to. So yeah, that's that's quite easy to do and I think I'm just going to carry my line on down to here I'm not going to I'm not going to um, go halfway along I think that the, that point of the beak tends to come down over the top of the under beak <laughs> if that makes sense so I'm just going to go along here so I'm nearly done and I'm just doing a back stitch and pulling it quite tightly each time to create that that line if I felt I needed to I could go back over it again once I've done this first line let's keep turning it and turning it to make sure I'm following along the line on both sides oops I've now I'm threading my needle so I'm quite happy with that it's <laughs> time to get a real little character now so I'm gonna carry on just finish this little line and do some little short stitches in the white here and then when I come to put the eyes in, I'll come back and show you. I finished making the little bag, a little kind of bucket bag it's turned into. I ended up turning it inside out so the blanket stitch is on the inside. So it's still good it's there because it'll stop it fraying, but I just thought it looked a bit neater like that. I considered doing over an over stitch on this across here, but I've just decided it's probably just been too fussy. So well. Uh, and here I did a, a whipped back stitch. I might even just um, put a little bead here in a minute to look like a button down kind of you know where the, the flap of the bag is buttoned down it'll look better once it, you won't see all that messy inside once it's got things in there it's 
fish and chips in there. <laughs> I've just got the whatever I'm going to put inside the bag. The fish and chips are inside the bag and then the legs and feet to do. There we go. I've finished adding in some little stitches in the yellow and white just to blend that all in a bit and I've put some little detached kind of fly stitches whatever they're called <laughs> down here I'm going to dig out some buttons in a minute to go on there I found a tiny button I've got just a very small stash of these which I think I'm going to use on the um on the bag that'd be quite nice um, and I found these black glass beads which I like to use for eyes so I'm going to pick out two roughly the same size and I've threaded my needle um, slightly different way this time so what I've done is I've doubled up the length of thread it's just one strand of the embroidery cotton and I've put the two cut ends through the eye of the needle leaving the loop at the other end it just makes it a bit easier to do this next bit so now I want to put the eyes in I think I want the eye to go about there I mean depending on where I put it I'll get different kind of expressions but I think there looks about right to me I need to make sure I come out the same on the other side. So I'm going to pull this right the way through. Well, not quite right the way through. Just leaving that end with the with the loop. Now I'm taking a tiny stitch, really tiny, like that, and going back through. coming out just a tiny distance from where I first went in and as I pull the thread through I'm going to go through that loop it just makes a nice little knot without an end to get rid of and now before I attach the beads I'm going to go back and forth a few times to start creating that little dip for the bead to sit in. I need to keep making sure I come up in the right place again. Yep. Do you think you can see that starting to make the the look of the eye? And now because they have I'm not I'm going to do the kind of scary gull eyes, the yellow eyes with the <laughs> sort of weird lizardy look. Um, these are just going to be black, but they do have that kind of slitty shape sometimes, don't they? So I'm, I'm going to now just elongate that hole a little bit, just make the stitch a little bit wider to start creating that sort of long slit shape. So you can see that it's starting to have that effect of a of an eye. I'm just going to do it once more and then I'm going to add the bead. I, I, I might decide the bead is too much and end up just going with a bit more stitching but I'm going to try the bead because I think actually it would work fine like that. It's like he's sleeping. <laughs> or I could try a French knot instead. But let's try the bead. He's got nice big holes these ones so otherwise I might have to change needles. probably do it's more striking isn't it with the whoops with the bead there hey it does have that sort of beady way of that goals have of watching you so I go back through the bead again let's just make this extra safe come up on the other side back through again And now I'm going to just not pull through quite all the way. And go 
back through again really close to the bead and through that loop and that will help to make a little knot to fasten it off and then I can just take that bead that uh, needle right underneath underneath the, the chin here right out of the way and then just pull the thread taut oh it's absolutely pouring down the rain there we go <laughs> it's funny from the top yeah I think the beady eyes are a good idea it was quite hard to decide though well, it's making me think I've, I fancy doing some other birds in the same way it's cute with his little bag on and actually I can bring his arm down his, his wing down he can hold on to his bag look <laughs> I think it's adorable if I do say so myself <laughs> okay I've still got to make some things to go in the bag I've got to make his feet and I've got to make a little hat to make the hat I'm going to use mostly this fabric I've got this circle around that so I'm going to use the heat erasable pen I must remember to go give a blast from the hair dry because I've still got some blue here where I drew around that first pattern piece oh, I must do this on the wrong side actually right draw around this just leaving enough for a, a bit of a seam allowance and I'm going to draw around it again so I'm going to use this one for the brim and this one for the crown of the hat doesn't matter I've gone into white there because that bit won't show right, the hat's going to be the lining of it I think yep I think that would be nice but first of all to make the, the crown of the hat I'm gonna do this as a as a tiny um, Suffolk puff I've made this teeny weeny little Suffolk puff fastened it off flattened it out I've just left raw edges there because they're not going to show anyway and this will just become that kind of top part of the hat I think it's about the right size so now if I just put this in the middle I can see it's about the same size as the centre of that and that's easier to draw around so very very much making this up as I go along so <laughs> so I'm thinking this is this is where I'll attach the I'll, this will be the upright part of the hat and then it will need to stitch onto there so I need to cut this hole up but again with a seam allowance on the inside so I'll clip all the curves first thing I'll do is and I'm just going to stitch all the way around here cut out the middle turn it the right way out I've sort of tidied up the inside it's still a bit messy I could put another circle inside but am I going to bother probably not <laughs> and I've done a little bit of straight stitching all around the outside just to make it look a bit more interesting really and now I can just sort of shape the hat decide which way around I like it best pop it on his little head or hers <laughs> oh, cute I think I'll, I will have to um make a little cord out of some of the embroidery thread just to put around there and tie it around his chin I think it's a her now it looks like a her now I just want to do a little um, finishing whip stitch around the edge as well I just think it needs to needs just that finishing touch and I need to do the feet also 
at least one fish and a couple of chips to go in there as well so need to get the skates on got to get this video edited it's got to go up tomorrow morning so here's what i'm going to use for the feet i think what i'll do is just quickly explain what i'm planning to do because this video is going to get ridiculously long again if anybody's got any questions about how i've done any of this please don't be afraid to ask i want the legs to be reasonably long so i'm going to plan to use this the whole length of this and i think what I'll, the easiest way to do it is rather than try and stuff something i'll cut it in half and then Let's just do it now. I fold it in half. Half again, half again kind of thing. Until I make like a long tube like this and then I can just whip stitch down there. Pretty much like I did for the bag strap. And then I think what might look quite cute I will have to try one to see if it works. It's for the little nook because they've got quite pronounced knobbly knees, seagulls, haven't they? I'm going to see if I've got enough length in this to just tie a knot in the middle to represent the knee and that will let it sort of it will create almost like a, a little bit of a joint. If that doesn't work, um, I will find a small wooden bead to, to thread on there instead to create the, the joint. Or the knee the knee bone the knobbly knee and then i just need to do the feet so part of this is being dictated by how much fabric i've got to play with so going back to my original picture yeah i didn't well i just skate <laughs> just skated over them i think i'm just going to go for like a three pointed shape like this something like that but that would probably be too huge i don't mind them being a bit complicated like the the wings are stupidly small the beak's too big i quite like the idea of the feet being big as well so maybe i will i will make them about that size so i've got enough to do all out of this fabric haven't i have i have i almost almost not quite really okay so i'll cut two out of this and two out of that to make the two feet and i'll have to just leave a little bit extra for seam allowance. I will stuff them very lightly and then I'll backstitch through to create that sort of webbed look. I'll leave this bit open so that I can insert the leg in there before I stitch it all together. And I think I'm just gonna just stitch the leg on there, just do a kind of a ladder stitch around it. I don't think I'm gonna be able to film all of that now. Um, because I just think this is all going to get a bit too long. But as I say, do if you've got any questions and you want to have a go at doing something, do do uh, do ask me. Hopefully that's fairly that's fairly simple anyway. And the fish I will be making out of the the back of this, the reverse side of this fabric, I will literally do a shape like this, smaller than that, and I'll find a sequin that will work as the eye. And then I, I might do one the other way up so I can do a tail, but I might decide a tail shape's a bit too complicated to do. I don't know. I will, I will literally just use, use the wrong side of this, stuff it very lightly. Um, and the chips I'll do in a very similar way to how I'm going to do the leg, except I'll fold it in half to bulk it out a bit. And that'll be enough to indicate chips. And I, I might even um, use a little bit of Inktense pencil or something to to do some sort of brown edges on the chips so I think I'm going to carry on and do all of that now and then come back and show you it when it's done here we go he's all done um, <laughs> I'm really happy with it <laughs> I just did a, a very long skinny tube of fabric and the tying the knots in the middle worked really well I think to make the little knees and um did the feet as uh, as i described i've made some sort of mock-up chips for now because i've just kind of run out of time and um and a couple of little fishes um just because i need to get this finished now to get this video ready but i think i'm going to carry on titivating a bit with this i'm delighted with it i'm, I'm going to have to try and take photos to show it because it doesn't really i can't show the right angle but 
so I think um, I'm going to go and record the beginning of this video now and try and show <laughs> this at a slightly better angle. Um, thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much to the lovely Susie Q for doing this collab with me. Of course, um, I will leave the link to um, Susie's channel. So please do go and check it out. I've already had a peek at what Sue's made uh, for this week for this week's video um, and I'm sure you're going to absolutely love it so thanks again for joining me today and I will see you again really soon bye